This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. Jesus is up for the challenge. A lawyer comes to our great teacher and puts him to the test. He asks Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Just give me a detailed plan. Just tell me what steps I need to follow and what hoops I need to jump through. Lay out the requirements, Jesus. This guy is up for the task. Now, Jesus knows that this is a man of the law. He likes rules, and he likes to follow them. Okay, then, what is written in the law, Jesus says. What do you read there? The man responds with the greatest commandment. He says, well, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says that this man has given the correct answer and that if he follows this commandment, he will find life. But this lawyer is not satisfied. There's always a loophole that can be exposed, and he's going to find it. This is all great, Jesus, but can you tell me who is my neighbor? This is when Jesus lays out the most well-known parables as he tells the story of the Good Samaritan. The term Good Samaritan is a phrase that has invaded our society and culture, penetrating the wall that separates the religious from the secular. You pick up a newspaper, open a magazine, browse the internet, watch the 10 o'clock news. Stories of Good Samaritans are peppered throughout each. Stories that are deep with emotion and tug at our heartstrings. These stories are tales of do-gooders who help out a total stranger, not for monetary gain, not for a search of fame, but just for the simple fact that it's the right thing to do. I was on the receiving end of a healthy dose of generosity many years ago when I was traveling with my two young children and trying to navigate airport terminals. Now, for some dumb reason, I decided that for this trip, I was just going to carry on all our luggage to avoid paying the price for checking a bag or two. Not the smartest move on my part, especially since we had to change planes in Dallas. I found myself struggling with two rolling bags, a backpack, a stroller, a helpful four-year-old, and an extremely squirmy one-and-a-half-year-old. As I was preparing to depart the airplane to maneuver through the Dallas airport, a businessman who was traveling alone had pity on me. He offered to pull one of my bags to the next gate for me. Forever grateful, I took this man up on his offer, and we had a fantastic conversation along the way, hearing about his family and his business, the joys in his life and the challenges. When we got to the gate, he departed with a firm handshake and a smile, and boom, he was off to California. Now, I knew I would never see the guy again, but smiling back at him, I knew that this would make a great sermon illustration. A good Samaritan and I crossed paths for the briefest of moments, yet the small commitment he had made to me made the biggest difference in the world. Now, if these roles were reversed, would I have done the same thing? Well, I would now because I experienced the generosity of this stranger, but prior to this event, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm sure that I could think of a million excuses not to help out a dad who was all alone struggling with the juggling. No, I can't help that guy out. I need to stop by the restroom. I need to go grab some food. Maybe I should grab a magazine for the next leg of my journey. I probably should check in with my wife to see how things are going back home. I just don't know if I have enough time to haul this guy's luggage to his gate and then get to mine. Who is my neighbor? Jesus sets out an elaborate tale of a man who is mugged and left for dead. Two men, a priest and a Levite, they pass the man not even giving him a second look. Help arrives once the Samaritan comes to the rescue. And this isn't just some stranger helping out another stranger, but two bitter enemies finding a common bond in generosity and hospitality. You see, the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along well at all. In fact, they couldn't stand each other. And this is the point that Jesus is trying to make. Who is my neighbor? Well, 
Everyone who walks on this planet is your neighbor, whether it's a friend or a foe. There are no distinctions. You want eternal life? Then think of others. Lend a hand. Love one another. Show mercy, kindness, and unselfishness. Emulate the Good Samaritan. Go and do likewise. I just love what Jesus is saying here. This is a great instruction that he doles out to the lawyer and to us. The only issue that I have is that it's not always the easiest thing to actually go and do likewise. It comes back to the self-centeredness that I sometimes feel. And it's probably because self-centeredness is the easier route. It's way much easier to turn a blind eye to a problem than to stop and try to find a solution. It's much easier to walk on by than to ask if someone needs a hand. It's much easier to keep to yourself than strike up a conversation with an unknown person. So how do we love our neighbor as ourselves? Well, Jesus has an answer for that too, but that answer doesn't come until after the resurrection. You see, the situation that the disciples find themselves in is dire. Jesus is crucified in their mourning. He's then raised and they're celebrating. Then he leaves them again as he ascends to heaven. So now these disciples, they sit at the crossroads. What are they going to do with this message of God's love that they not only hold on to, but also experienced as friends of Jesus? Well, the last word that Jesus says to his disciples, it says it all. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power. Power that gives strength to believe the message. Power that gives courage to tell others about the good news. Power that drives us to walk in the footsteps of our Lord. It is this power that we find in the Holy Spirit that allows us to do things we might not have ever thought possible. We can accept others for who they are. We can live with peaceful hearts in search of harmony. We can show our love of God through generous acts. The Holy Spirit is that which pushes these fear-stricken, uneducated, fishermen-turned-disciples out of the comforts of that upper room and into the world to proclaim the greatest message that there ever has been. It is the same Holy Spirit that pushes us out of our comfort zones, whatever they might be, in order to love our neighbors as ourselves. It isn't always the easiest calling to answer. There will be times when we are more successful at answering God's call to help others. We just need to place full trust in our God that he will continue to be with us through the presence of the Holy Spirit, a spirit that empowers, guides, leads, encourages, and pushes. A spirit that challenges us to reflect the love and mercy that God's only Son had for us. Go. Go and do likewise. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Later.